Hi everyone, it's Ashley. Thank you so much for clicking on my video today. So guys, I just want to say right off the bat before I even get started, I just want to apologize for the format of this video. I am not exactly sure how this video is going to come together. This video is now three nights in the making. Um, I have really <laughs> been trying to craft for the last three nights and I have gotten a little bit done every night but something has also happened every night and I've had to just kind of stop where I was and pick it back up. So this is exactly how I left my desk last night and I was just ironing it on and my daughter woke up, she wasn't feeling good, so she woke up sick. So I kind of just left everything as it was and obviously went and tended to her. But as I come back into my craft room tonight, I do want to go ahead and finish this up. I do see a couple areas now that it's cool it's been sitting here you know all night and all day I do see a few areas that kind of popped up so I want to go in and give this just a little more heat and then I think what I'm going to end up doing is I will probably go ahead we'll craft tonight um everything that I didn't get done and then I will probably add the clip of this craft and the one other craft that I did before this. I will probably just add those clips to the end of this. And like I said, I do apologize. Hopefully once I go to edit everything together, it won't be so bad, but... I know you guys have absolutely no context for this craft, but just know that this is how it came out. I think it is so cute. Just a little trio of presents. And like I said, I'll show you the clip of me kind of making this and whatnot. I will insert it at the end, but this is how it came out. And I was just thinking how cute, you know, not every sign needs words. So I just thought this would be a cute little filler. And, you know, feel free to really personalize this to your decor, right? So like my other thought was to go with like a matte white vinyl i think that that would be really really cute and classy for me you know i'm just in the season of my life i have a young daughter um she is three years old going on four i just think now is the time for me to really have fun and bring a lot of creativity and festiveness to our home but you know if that's not your taste if that's not your alley do it any way you like, you know, that's the beauty of crafting, as I always say. And I was actually thinking like, how cute would this be though, if you liked more of like a neutral Christmas or even like more of like a darker Christmas. I think this would be really, really pretty in like black as well. Like do the presents in black and maybe like leave off the star. I think that that could be really, really pretty and very neutral so it doesn't come off you know, kind of as whimsical as I went with mine. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to the side. I hope that you guys stay around to the end to see me kind of whip this up. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get our crafts that we're going to do tonight. Okay, so bringing in my first couple of blanks here. They were just the closest to me. I showed you guys these little houses. I got these at Dollar Tree not too long ago, and they literally said, like, live on them. I don't know, something really random and, like, I thought didn't really go with the house itself or, like, why you would want to display it. However, I did think the shape of it was cute, right? And I thought the little houses were super cute. So I decided to pick it up. And I have made this over on my channel once before. I did it for fall. But when I originally bought them, I definitely, my first thought was kind of Christmas. So I am excited to be bringing this to my channel tonight. I do have this long piece of transfer tape here that was just sitting on the side of my desk that I used for something last night, I believe. So I'm going to go ahead and set this down and it looks like it's going to work just perfectly. It goes just to this little dot here. So that's going to be pretty good, I think. Now I'm going to lay these down individually, but just for the sake of time and my sanity i'm just going to kind of lay that transfer tape down and then come through and cut my letters apart you could also just cut a piece of transfer tape the size of one of your letters and just use that one piece of transfer tape to transfer all your letters um that will help you save some material for sure 
Okay, so if you can't tell, I just went in and spelled out ho, ho, ho with just a little um, accent at the end here. So let's bring my houses closer to me and let's kind of get started. So I know that my two little accent pieces are gonna go on the ends. So I'm just gonna start by grabbing my first H here. And these are all exactly the same size, so no need in worrying about which one's going on which. But I'm simply going to take it, put it down on my little house. I'm going to try to put all the letters towards the bottom, so that way hopefully I can kind of get them lined up well. So now I will just go and grab an O, and then we'll bring that in. And like I said, I am going to have some wasted transfer tape here. I definitely wouldn't cut a new piece of transfer tape for this. But since I already had a um, piece of scrap from last night, I'm okay with, you know, now tossing it. I've got my use out of it. But if I was like having to cut one off of the roll, I would just cut a piece just big enough for my largest piece. And then I would use that one piece of transfer tape to lay down all of my pieces, right? So I have to show you guys, one of the crafts we're gonna do here in the second, I went to Hobby Lobby yesterday, and let me tell you, I don't know. I don't, I haven't been in Hobby Lobby lately, I will say. And I went in yesterday to grab a pack of ornaments and I don't know, like, is it just me or does Hobby Lobby like give anyone else anxiety lately? I don't feel like I always got anxiety from Hobby Lobby, but man, I went in there yesterday and just, I didn't really enjoy it. There was a ton, a ton of people, which I feel like is now kind of the case. And that might just be, you know, my store specifically. I live in um, you know, metro area. So that could just be my store, but it was like, man, it's always busy and it's just like Christmas everything. And, you know, I went down this aisle and it was like New Year's and I was just like, oh my goodness, I am definitely, definitely not ready for to be thinking about New Year's. And then, you know, as I kind of browse around, I don't know, they just have so, so many new and cool things that I would love to try and I would love to kind of experiment with. But, you know, I do not have, you know, unlimited time. I do not have unlimited resources. So unfortunately, you know, it's kind of one of those things where I have to be careful because I very, very quickly kind of go down these rabbit holes and I'll find like a new craft or kind of like a new creative outlet and I will go like all in you know and to me it's like this is what I've been like searching for like this is the craft you know and then you know it is for a week or two and then I'm on to the next thing you know and I have got better with kind of realizing that about myself I do realize it is something that I do so with that in mind, I can be a little more mindful, you know, but I do have that little voice in my head that's like, oh my goodness, you know, like, I don't know, I just want to, it's like I go into Hobby Lobby and I'm so inspired and I just see all these different things and I'm like, oh my goodness, I want to try everything and I want to try everything today immediately. So I don't know, I was very, very overwhelmed by Hobby Lobby yesterday. You guys will have to let me know if you've had that experience. It could totally just be me, but anywho. Okay guys, so here's how it came out. I think it's so cute. I plan to set this on our console under our television in our living room, and I will probably set it where they're just kind of barely overlapping and put them a little bit, you know, tilted inwards like this. And I think it will just be so cute. I forgot to tell you guys, I did give this a ton of coats of 
Barely Pink by Folk Art, I believe it's called. It's just a super, super light pink color. And then I just went with the maroon vinyl and I absolutely love how it came out. Let's go ahead and set these to the side and move on. Okay, so speaking of Hobby Lobby, these are the little ornaments I went to grab. I actually grabbed these and also the acrylic ones um, that I know we have all seen in may have done or maybe not have done i will tell you i did do them i did start them i don't know honestly i don't know if it's gonna be if it's gonna make it to my channel or not i had a little bit of an issue and i'm not entirely happy with how they came out so i am not sure if i'm going to post that video or not but Either way, I went into Hobby Lobby to grab some ornaments, and these are another one that I picked. So these are just called Round Ornament. It's six pieces. They are 3.77 by 4.29 inches. They are $2.49, but I get them when they're half off, so $1.25 for six of them. And I think that these are really, really nice. Like when they're on sale, they're the same price as Dollar Tree, but I just feel like the quality is really nice. It has kind of the laser cut um, top there, which gives it a really nice finish to it. And it comes with the hanger. Now you can always change the hanger if you like and really step it up in that way, or you can leave it. Also bringing in, I showed you guys this vinyl that I picked up at Dollar Tree in my last haul. This is made for the Cricut Joy, and it was just a really pretty patterned vinyl. And this is it here. So like I said in that video, I really just fell in love with the pattern itself. I love patterned vinyl, but sometimes it's a little difficult for me to figure out exactly how I want to use it. So I thought that this might be a really, really nice way to use this patterned vinyl without really having to cut it on my machine because I heard that the vinyl from Dollar Tree does not cut that well which I mean is fine, you know, it's $1.25, what do you expect? And I haven't tested that for myself, so I really, I don't know, but I usually tend to kind of use pattern vinyls in this way anyways, so for me, it's not really a big deal. So I'm just gonna kind of cut it to fit my circle very, very loosely here. And grabbing my weeding tool, I will just pick up our backer. And then what I think I'm going to do is just kind of expose my vinyl here. And then I want to set it so that, let's see, maybe I should, yeah, I think I'm going to set the vinyl down on the ornament. And then that way too, I can kind of have a little more control over my placement as well, right? So just kind of bringing this in, I'm going to bring this right up to the top of the circle. I might even kind of bring it a little higher than that top. I'm gonna to start in the center and just kind of work my way out. Just bringing in my little cutting mat from the Dollar Tree and I also have my Cricut True Control knife. I'm simply gonna turn this over and let's start to cut this ornament out, right? So I'm gonna start, let's see. This is the only hesitation I had. I wasn't exactly sure how I was gonna get like kind of in the waves of the top of this ornament. However, honestly, I don't think that it needs to be perfect and I don't think that it needs to go all the way up, you know, so to say, I think that if I just kind of get it roughly where it'll lay down, I think that it'll be okay. I honestly don't think it's gonna be as much of an issue as I'm thinking it's gonna be. So let's see if my theory is in fact correct. Now I will tell you, let's see if we can do it this way because this is raised, it's like, let me show you. It is, you know, it does have some dimension here where this is. So normally I would flip this over and then cut around it. However, because this is raised, it's not letting it sit flat. So I'm gonna leave it like this. And then since it is sitting flat, maybe try to do it that way. Hmm. Huh. No, I think I need to just kind of cut the, there we go. I was gonna say, I think I need to just kind of rip the Band-Aid off and just go for it. 
and I think that was the right choice. I will tell you this vinyl is extremely, extremely thin, so it does not take much pressure at all to get this vinyl to cut, which, you know, in this instance for what I'm using it for right now is nice. And then I'm just going to start to pull this away and I want to pull it down kind of like away from my blank so that way it doesn't rip, kind of prevent ripping as much as I can. I have a couple areas I need to go in and finish cutting here. And again, it's just this top part here that's kind of a little tricky, just kind of figuring out how to go about it. I honestly think at the top, it might be easier for me to honestly just bring in my little Cricut scissors and genuinely cut this. Okay, so I do think that that was probably the easiest way to do it. So I will tell you, this is how it's looking as of now. It is very rough. You know, you can see around the edges, it's not a perfect circle. And then kind of there where my ornament is, it's not looking the best. But I think what's really gonna help this is a little sanding, right? So I'm gonna move this over my trash can, but I'm simply going to sand downward, right? Away from my blank. And I'm just gonna really focus on getting that paper off of my edges. Okay, so bringing it back in, this is kind of what it looks like after I sanded it. The edges look much, much better, super cute. Now I need to get these little top pieces off of my ornament. So what I'm gonna do is just bring in my true control knife and I'm literally just gonna cut them off. This part, like I said, I really don't think it needs to be perfect. I think that as long as you just kind of keep it close to the lines that the ornament already naturally has, it will be just fine. Oh my goodness, look how cute this came out. I am in love. Okay, I have to do the other five and I'll see you when they're done. Okay guys, so here's how my sweet little ornaments came out. I think they are so cute. I will tell you I only made three for now because I didn't wanna make this video too long, but I will make the other three soon. And I'm actually thinking about maybe changing the pattern just because I have another pattern that I think would look really, really pretty on these. So I might try another one. I will tell you the Dollar Tree vinyl worked perfectly for this craft. I think that this is such a beautiful pattern and I could not be happier with these. I think they look so classy and I will definitely be going back into design space and cutting something to go on the front of these and then I will probably use these as little gift tags and then something they can also use as decor. So that is one of my favorite things to do. So I am excited to have these. Let's go ahead and move on. 
Okay, let's bring in my cup cradle because I do have a couple cups that I want to get done tonight. So this little mug here is from the Dollar Tree. It is just a white mug and it has these really pretty silver, mm, is it silver? I'm gonna say it's gray just because it's not really reflective, right? There's no like metallic nature to it. It's just kind of there, which I like. I prefer that look. So I'm gonna say it's gray and not silver but it's just this little mug and it's actually a really, really nice substantial mug. I do love to get drinkware at the Dollar Tree because they really have like nice substantial mugs. And I love this when it has like just a little design on it because then it gives me the perfect canvas to add just something a little extra, right? which is my absolute favorite. So just bringing in my little design here that I cut. I cut this little design for a sweet friend of mine who is a new mama. So I thought I just could not not make this for her, right? And I actually saw for the first time was at Target. They had last year a mug that said this, and I don't know, I just thought, I like literally laughed out loud in Target because I just thought it was so cute and so humorous. So as you can see, or maybe not see, I'm sorry if the glare's bad, it says all mama wants, uh oh, lost my little A there. Okay, crisis averted. So it says all mama wants is a silent night, and I thought, Man, I remember those days. Oh my goodness, I do remember those days. And honestly, like now, even with her being three, I mean, there's still nights where this still applies, right? I was just in here crafting away, having a great time, and she just popped up out of nowhere, and my poor baby was just not feeling well, so. Just bringing in a scrap piece of transfer tape, I just laid that down, burnished it front and back. Then we're gonna pull our backer off, hopefully leaving our design on our transfer tape. And then I just brought in my little cup cradle here. It is amazing, it works for so many things, and it is so, so helpful. So I love these mugs like this because I feel like it gives me a really nice kind of design that's like already there for me to work with right and then it just gives me a nice area to kind of lay a sweet little sentiment down and really personalize this to the person I'm giving it to so just grabbing my little Cricut scissors I'm gonna make some relief cuts in this tape just because it is a little more curved than I thought it was gonna be and that design needs a little bit of help laying down straight so as I was saying, I brought in my little cup cradle here and I will have it linked below in my Amazon store. It is amazing. It works for so many things. And let me tell you, it is a really good price. So I think it's a really, really nice buy. And on that note, I also want to say really quickly that I have officially made my first dollar from my YouTube channel someone used one of the links in my description box and bought something um and i actually made a dollar 30. i am so so excited you guys and i just want to say thank you so much to not only the person who you know clicked my link and bought something from one of my links i really do appreciate that so much but also to just the person who is watching this right now, I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate you being curious about what is on my crafting table and looking to me for some inspiration. That is 100% why I started my channel. I really wanted to just show you guys kind of what I'm working on. I love, love, love to see what is on other people's crafting tables. So I figured, you know, if I love to see what's on other people's tables, maybe someone would like to see what's on mine, right? 
So that was kind of the catalyst for my channel. And I just have to say thank you to everyone. Thank you. So guys, this is how my little cup came out. It is a little hard to see. I'm seeing on camera. It's a little hard to read it. I will tell you in person and hopefully like when I take the photo for the thumbnail, in person, it's really easy to see. It's very readable. Really, really hard for me to show you guys, but it came out so cute. And like I said, it says, all mama wants is a silent night and a man. But like I was saying, I love these mugs like this because when you see this design like this, think of what you can put either, you know, on top of it or around it or how you can personalize this for the person that you want to use it for, right? If it's yourself, if it's a gift, whatever the case may be, just taking a moment to add just a little bit of vinyl will really turn this from just a basic mug that anyone can get to something that really is meant for the person that you're gifting it to, right? So just another note, make sure you always leave enough room at the top for them to sip because you don't want their lip touching the vinyl, okay? Let's go ahead, we have one more glass to do. Bring in my next little blank here. This is just a little wine glass from the Dollar Tree as well. I, again, this is one of the things I kind of always pick up and I like to have on hand because they make for really simple and quick gifts. And I think, you know, if you're someone who watches crafting videos, you have seen this. All right, so just coming in with my design here, start in a corner, grab my vinyl, and then I'm just gonna slowly go through removing my background. And I wanna leave my design on that carrier sheet. Perfect. And how cute is this? It just says, holly jolly. And I think that this is just too cute, you know? Around the holidays, it's nice. Mama just has her little cup of holly jolly juice and everyone's happy, right? So I thought this would be just a really sweet little cup to gift. And I thought putting it in the really like pale pink just makes it really kind of girly and flirty and fun. So once again, just bringing in a scrap piece of transfer tape. I'm actually going to need just a little bit more. So just finding another piece of tape here. I have like so, so many scrap pieces of transfer tape at this point. So that's why, you know, if you guys see me use it and you think like, oh, you probably could have used that again. Like, trust me, it's probably been used to the point where it's just not worth it anymore. Because let me tell you, I am super cheap. So if I go to throw something away or don't use it, there is definitely a reason for it. Believe me. Because I am not one to throw much away. Um... <laughs> I, I don't want to say it like that because, I don't know, I kind of feel like I sound like a hoarder. And I don't think I'm a hoarder. Uh, my husband might feel differently, but I don't think I'm a hoarder. I'm just a crafter. And, you know, sometimes it's hard for us to throw things away. So this is a little bit of older vinyl. I got it out of my scrap bin. And I ha am having a problem getting the vinyl off of the carrier sheet it kind of wanted to stick so just getting that started I think we'll be okay now hopefully but just something to mention as your vinyl gets older sometimes I notice that that does become an issue so if you ever run into that that could be the case so anyways back to that so it's funny it's like you know, I, I'm not a hoarder, I'm just a crafter. And it's like, I tell my husband, like we could never go like on Family Feud because I feel like our answers, like my answers would just be a lot different than like a normal person. You know, like they would be like, what's something you always have in your refrigerator? And like my answer would be a foam brush. Like I always, always have a foam brush in my refrigerator. And my husband will be like, can we retire this foam brush? Like, and I'm like, yeah, but I keep one, I keep a white one in my refrigerator just because I use a lot of white paint and, you know, I can use it forever. And he'll be like, you know, it'll be in there for like months and he'll be like, can we retire this one? And like, can you grab a new one? And I'm like, oh, 
I don't know. I've only used it like eight times. I can still use it. And he's like, and then he'll come just kind of give me the look. And I'm like, okay, fine. Like, you know, honestly, in this economy, I don't think it's the smartest decision, but you know, go for it. And I just have to give him a little bit of a hard time, but it's funny. I think if you are a crafter, you can relate. Or at least I hope someone can relate with me, right? Oh my goodness. I do not want to be the only one in the world <laughs> who keeps foam brushes in their refrigerator. So I actually kind of got this snowflake stuck on my finger here. So I don't even know if this is where it was, but this is where it's going to go now. And I'm going to try to get this off of my finger. But let me tell you, oh my gosh, this vinyl is like so so sticky oh my goodness oh my goodness that really really does not want to come off my finger okay this vinyl oh my gosh is so sticky okay let's get this down because yeah I don't know what is going on with that thing okay so once again I'm just gonna try to center it leaving enough room to sip now I'm going to bring in now Honestly, you should try to put your relief cuts before you lay it down. I just never remember to do it until it's too late. So that's why I'm doing it once I lay it down. But try to do it before you lay it down. It just, it makes it easier. That's how you're supposed to do it. You know, at least I remember it all. That's how I think of it, right? At least I remember anything at all. <laughs> So just coming through and laying this down, this is gonna be so, so sweet. I love it already. And then I will just rip that off. Oh, so cute, so, so, so cute. And there we go, here's how it came out. What do you guys think? I think it's so cute. And just think when it's filled with like red wine, oh, it's gonna be so pretty, I am in love. Okay, bringing in my little Dollar Tree magnet. You guys know I love this magnet. I change this little magnet out every chance I get. It just makes me happy. I will change this thing in a heartbeat. I mean, I will like have this thing up for two days and change it. I do not care. I love it. Well, just grabbing this dot to my eye that of course I got just a little too confident and ripped up but no problem I was able to rescue it and we will just lay her back down where she belongs perfect so this magnet is from Dollar Tree it just has like a saying on it or something on the front I just covered it in a couple layers of white chalk paint and then I put glossy Mod Podge over it and then that way it allows me to kind of put the vinyl down and pick it up without damaging the paint and having to repaint it every time, right? So, and if you guys can see yet, this just says Christmas girly. And this magnet here is actually going in my office. So this is not gonna be the one for the refrigerator, but same concept. The one on the refrigerator is still the pumpkin spice latte season one. Um, I haven't changed it for Thanksgiving. I'm not sure if I will or not, but. Okay, so just bringing this in, I will just lay that down just like that. And then now I did cut out these little stars in the Cricut Shimmer Vinyl. I will tell you based on previous experience, I have to use a strong transfer tape with the Shimmer Vinyl. Anyways, you have to use the um, strong grip transfer tape. With that being said, I'm pretty sure that, like this is a piece of scrap one that I had in my drawer, but I'm pretty sure that this came with the vinyl. Like I'm pretty sure they included a little bit of it with it. So 
just in case you have it and you're thinking like, oh, I don't have any strong grip transfer tape, check the roll because I want to say that it came with some because I have like never bought Cricut transfer tape like ever, so... And here's my sweet little magnet. Isn't it so cute? I love it. How cute is that? Okay, next, just bringing in this little sign. I got this at the Dollar Tree. And I thought that this would be really cute to make a little countdown to Christmas sign for my daughter. So with that in mind, I just cut out this sweet little Days to Christmas cutout. And I thought that it would be really cute to kind of set this in her room and we could write with the um, chalk marker every day, put in how many days until Santa Claus comes. Some of these letters got really, really small here. So I'm just gonna go in and kind of remedy these as best as I can. But also keeping in mind, this is for a three-year-old's bedroom. So, you know, it is not gonna be the end of the world if this is just a little wonky. But I will try my best. Okay, I think that's gonna be just about good for me. So we just have this cute little design, it's just a little wreath, and then it says days until Christmas. Okay, and then just bring in my blank here. I will just center this as best as I can. And then I will burnish this down. And there we go, there is her little countdown. And I was actually wanting to see if I would have enough um, room to put her name at the top. And I think that it'll be just enough. So I think I'm gonna go in and put her name here and just put a little personalized touch to it. But how sweet, and this will be a great reminder to be nice, right? Okay guys, bringing in my last craft here. Thank you so much for sticking with me and making it to the end of this video. I know it is going to be a longer one, which I like longer videos. You guys will have to let me know if you prefer long or short format, but I personally love long videos. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Oops, just got my U a little, there we go. Okay, so just going carefully, some of these letters are a little small at the top here. I wanted to finish my video out tonight by making just a little something for me and my husband. I thought this would be super cute to put in our bedroom. And I am really loving this maroon color with white. And then with the addition of the natural beads on my frame, I think this is just gonna be so up my alley. So just coming in really quickly, grabbing my middles. This should be a pretty easy design to get weeded.
Perfect. There we go. This just says meet me under the mistletoe and how sweet is that? So will this fit? I think maybe just maybe. Oh, just maybe. Okay. So bringing in my frame, I have done this already a ton of times on my channel. So I love this one. It opens just like a picture frame. I just cut a piece of cardstock to five by five, set that right inside and then replace it close my back and then that will give us a perfect blank canvas to then apply our vinyl to so let's go ahead i don't think i scraped this so let's scrape this down burnishing it back and then front perfect this is the vinyl i got from expressions vinyl and it has been really good i'm really impressed with it the color is beautiful and I've had really good luck with weeding it and using it. So I am very happy. So let's go ahead and bring our little design in. I'm just gonna try to get it as centered as I can. I think that looks just about good. Burnishing that down just slightly because we are putting this on paper. So we don't want it to rip our paper on the way up, right? So just enough to get it down but you don't want to get it too down, if that makes sense. And how sweet is that? And like I said, I am just, something about this deep maroon color with the all white frame and cardstock with the natural wood bead is just, oh my goodness. I think this is absolutely my favorite craft of the night. I am so happy. Bringing in my next blank here, this is just a wood blank from Hobby Lobby. It was originally $14.99 and I paid $8.99 for it when the wood pile is 40% off, I believe. And I just like this because I really like the white frame, but then I like the little added bonus touch of the darker beads around it. So I thought that this would be really pretty specifically for Christmas. So I just cut out a little design here that I thought would be super cute. And then for this piece here, now this word was longer than the 11 and a half you can cut um, without using your long mat, your 12 by 24 inch mat, which when I went to cut it, it said that I needed to use my 12 by 24 inch mat. And I was like, oh, I really don't want to, but I was like, oh, that's fine, whatever, I will. But I didn't even think about the fact that I only bought this um, maroon color in 12 by 12 sheets. And I told you guys a couple times, I like to buy um, my vinyl specifically like different colors and pattern vinyl in the 12 by 12 sheets. Just be aware that if you do decide to buy like vinyl in the 12 by 12 sheets, if you need to cut something that's longer than 11 and a half 12 inches you will need to break your design apart just like i did here and cut it into different pieces so i just went into design space and just sliced out my little e there and then i'll just piece that together um on my sign itself i think that it's not too bad if you can just get like one little piece because then I only have to worry about lining up that one little letter there, right? Bringing in my transfer tape here, let's grab a piece. Mm -hmm. 
So just applying that transfer tape, I'm going to burnish it front and back. And this is Oracle 651 Permanent Vinyl. So it should come off pretty easily here. I seem to have pretty good luck with the Oracle 651, so. Okay, let's move this to the side for just a second and bring in our blank. So just making sure that my hangers are at the top and they indeed are. I'm going to lay down this piece first just because my farmhouse will then lay in between this. And then in design space, I did leave this attached. That way I know that my spacing is just right on this part. And then all I have to worry about is getting that farmhouse in between, right? So just bringing this in, laying it down. I'm gonna try to get this as centered and straight as I can. That looks pretty good. And then just starting from the middle, I will just work my way out burnishing. Very nice. And then we will just go back in and grab our little farmhouse here. Now, let's see. I think I'm going to try to, let's see if we can't kind of piece this together and then lay our transfer tape down on it, right? So I'm going to cut literally right to the edge of that vinyl. Try to show you guys. So I just cut right up to the edge of my E and then I'm gonna place that E right where I want it on my S. And that looks just about good there. And then bringing back in my transfer tape, I'm gonna try to lay this down maybe. So let's see, let's lay it down like this actually. So let's lay down this part and then just bringing in my scissors, let's cut. Try to move it up so it's not so glary, I apologize for that. So then now kind of lining up my E exactly where I want it here. Just about there looks good. And then I'm just gonna take the rest of this transfer tape. Oh, no, I don't like that, let's see. So I went to go pull it up and it actually stayed, it stayed on the transfer tape. So I think that might be better actually because now it's just on there and I can lay it down. So that may have been a happy accident. Let's go ahead and line this up. Now this is a brand new piece of transfer tape here, so it's just really sticky. So that's why I'm having a little bit of a issue here. And let's go ahead and burnish this down, avoiding the tail of my E there. I don't want to accidentally pull that up. And then bringing that long word in here, I'm just going to simply bring it in and we're going to try to get this as centered as I can within my little text here. I think that looks pretty nice. It looks like my F might have got a little high there, so I could have probably brought it down a little. But I don't think I'm going to be able to get this back up now without a fight. Yeah, so I'm just going to leave it. I think it will be just fine. Let's go ahead and take off our transfer tape here. And then I really wanted this to go really far to the edge. So I did cut it a little bit bigger than my frame. So I do have a little bit of the tail of my E coming up on my sign here. So I'm just gonna take my Cricut True Control knife and just simply cut that off and then grab it. 
And here we go. Here's my little sign. What do you think? I think it came out so cute. I'm loving it. I love, love, love the traditional colors of the sign with this white frame, but then the dark beads. I love this. It is giving me cozy winter vibes. And let me tell you, I cannot wait to hang this up in my home. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get another craft done. So let's do a iron on craft really quickly. I'm going to turn my easy press here to medium, which is the two wavy lines. This is holographic iron on. Now I will tell you that I have only used this one other time and it was beautiful. I loved it, but... I will say that just looking at this after it was cut, I went to like try to see where it cut and so I could like save some scrap, some of the vinyl and like cut off, you know, the extra piece so I didn't lose it. And man, I could not see where this cut. So I was a little anxious to weed this just because I wasn't sure if I could even see where the Cricut had cut it. But I will tell you that once you kind of get close to it and really look, um, you can see those lines and it's weeding beautifully so far. It's just a little tough to see where the actual cut marks are. getting our last little pieces here. I will tell you because I haven't used this much and I haven't used it on wood, I did look up the heat guide and it said um, medium heat for 40 seconds firm pressure. So just keep that in mind. If you watch some of my videos, you know that I just, I tend to kind of wing it. So I don't always look up my heat guide. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So here is my little design. And again, just how sweet. If there is ever a time to use a pink holographic vinyl, I feel like Christmas presents are the time to do so. So I'm just gonna trim this down here. So bringing in my blank here, this is just a 12 by 12 piece of wood that I get from Hobby Lobby. It comes in a four pack, I believe. Um, and they just come in the unfinished wood section. I did stain this with my Waverly Antique Wax. And I have used this sign before, so it is on my channel if you're interested. So I was thinking something just like that. So let's go ahead and start to get this ironed on. So like I said, it did say 40 seconds, medium heat, firm pressure. So I will just begin to iron down our design here. Keep in mind, if you are using the mini, it is made to be moved constantly. So you do want to constantly move your mini around your design. You don't want to leave it in one spot for too long. So just coming through, we will get this laid down. Let's bring in all of our crafts and see what we got done tonight. Oh my goodness. I'm not even sure I even have everything in the shot here. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it to the end of this, 
you have to enjoy crafting just as much as I do. And I am so excited that you are here. Thank you so, so much for watching this. Please, please consider subscribing and giving me a thumbs up. I would love to hear what you thought of my crafts tonight and if you would change anything. You guys let me know, would you change anything? What would you do different? Or what would you like to do the same? Let me know down in the comments and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye.